In this video, we'll discuss the parallelogram rule for adding geometric vectors. And the parallelogram rule will of course be equivalent to the tip-to-tail rule that we have already established. And you might be wondering, why do we even need another rule when the one we have works so well? Well, there is an aesthetic reason for having the parallelogram rule, and that's what we're going to talk about. I may have noticed that our vectors seem to be all over the place. Some of them start at the origin, others start at the tips of other vectors, yet others seem to float in the plane wherever they want. Or if we're talking about vectors in three dimensions, they seem to float in space wherever they want. Now, of course, we have to bring them together when we want to add them according to the tip to tail rule. But once we establish our answer, we can place it wherever we want. And this treatment is particularly useful in physics where objects have finite size, and you may want to draw the force of gravity at the center of mass of a, of a body. And you may want to draw the velocity of a car at the tip of the car just for convenience. So that's a perfectly legitimate approach. You just need to add the rule that as long as vectors have the same length and direction, that they're considered equal. That's what allows us to move these vectors all over the place and then still add them as if they were very specific objects. So for example, these two vectors would be considered equal, these two vectors would be considered equal, and so forth, and these two vectors I drew on the board would be considered equal as well. Perfectly legitimate approach, but linear algebra takes a slightly cleaner approach. In linear algebra, we'll only consider vectors that emanate from the origin. So in the plane, We'll choose an arbitrary point and we'll call it the origin. And then we will only consider vectors that start here. So all of these other vectors are not even in the game. They're ignored. So we might have to draw temporary constructions to solve some of our problems. But once we find that what the answer looks like, we have to bring it back to the origin because those are the only vectors that are part of the game. Okay, now, that all of these vectors are gone, and we only have arbitrary vectors emanating from this point, we have to establish a rule for adding them. And of course, a great approach would be to simply, let's say we have to add A and B, to simply take the vector B and bring it over here, and then use the tip to tail rule. Works perfectly well, but like I said, for aesthetic reasons, why should we move the vector b and not the vector a, which by commutativity would of course result in the same thing. So why move one and not the other? And why move any at all if we agree that, all, that they should all start here and preferably not move if they don't have to? So there is another rule that's completely equivalent but is stated in a way that doesn't move any of the vectors. And what it says is, use these two vectors and complete a parallelogram. So draw a line parallel to this vector and draw a line parallel to, okay, draw a line parallel to A through the tip of B and parallel to B through the tip of A. And wherever these lines intersect, that's A plus B. Now I don't need to convince you that that's a completely equivalent construction. The resulting vector A plus B is the exact same thing we would have obtained by the tip to tail, but this rule doesn't involve moving any vectors. So maybe it's prettier, but that's all. I actually think that the tip to tail rule is much more, uh, is handier, is easier to apply. So whenever possible, I use the tip to tail rule, but it's good to have the parallelogram rule if you think that it's more attractive. Now, of course, the same, the exact same construction works in three dimensions. You might start with two vectors, and then you would draw a straight line. I'll just use, I don't have a straight line, so I will just use another vector. So you will draw a line parallel to one of the vectors through the tip of the other, and then another line through the tip of the other parallel to the first one. And wherever they intersect uh, will be A plus B. And the important thing to realize here is a point I made before, that all of this all happens in one plane. That's why these two straight lines that I just described are guaranteed to cross and intersect. Uh, 
two lines in three dimensions don't necessarily intersect. They can go like this and never intersect. But in this construction, because everything happens in this one plane, the plane of these two vectors, they are guaranteed to intersect. And a plus b is defined just as well in three dimensions as it is in two dimensions. A little bit of a challenge is applying this rule along a single straight line. Remember, we can treat a single straight line as a vector space in and of itself. And here, the parallel parallelogram rule actually breaks down. If we were to ha add these two vectors, that's very hard to do according to the parallelogram rule because if you were to do this, these two lines will both coincide with this line. And so there is not any one point where they intersect. So actually that's, that's a vote in favor of the tip to tail rule, which continues to work here without a problem and the parallelogram rule fails. So in any case, we have two rules. They're completely equivalent. Use whichever one you want, and it's nice to have two formulations of the same thing. That's how I look at it.